We loaded the pre-trained model and now we will start to understand this pre-trained model. So here we have set up the model just to predict audio given a new condition. We have our model is equal to the DTSP training models autoencoder. So let's take a look at this autoencoder model. And this is a class that dropped the model function for dependency injection with gene. And here we notice that we have a preprocessor, an encoder, a decoder, a processor group, and loss objects. And we have a method to encode, that get conditioning by preprocessing and then encoding, decode, get generated audio by decoding and then process, get audio from outputs, extract audio output tensor from outputs dictionary of the method call, and here we have call, run the core of the network, get predictions and loss. Then we have here, it runs through the processor group, parse the outputs, if training, it will update the losses dictionary and will return the outputs. And we see that this class autoencoder is uh, inheriting from the class model. So let's look the class model. And the class model wrap. Um, wrap the model function for dependency injection with gene and it inherits from a Keras model. We see here that there is this method call that reset the losses dictionary on each call and we have here also the method update losses dictionary that's a helper function to run loss objects on arguments and add to model losses, there's a restore that restore model and optimizer from a checkpoint and we are using here model restore checkpoint so it will also calculate the time it takes to restore the model and it will load this checkpoint then there is the get audio from outputs that extract audio output tensor from the outputs dictionary of call and here we have the call, and this call will run the forward pass and losses and create a dictionary of outputs. So this function must run the forward pass, add losses to self losses dictionary and return a dictionary of all the relevant output tensors. Let's go back here to the autoencoder and we see that we have preprocessor, encoder, decoder, processor and losses. For that, we go back to the paper, ICLR paper, we discussed about this in previous tutorials. And here we have the autoencoder architecture. And we see that the red components are part of the neural network architecture. The green components are the latent representation. And the yellow components are deterministic synthesizers and effects. So not all these components are used all the time. And also we have different types of encoders, different types of decoders, different types of deterministic synthesizers and effects. We go back here to the autoencoder and now we look at the gene configuration file. And here we have some parameters for autoencoder. So the encoder is set to none, so we will not have any encoder. The decoder is set to the RNN FC decoder, the loss is set to spectral loss, preprocessor pre is set to calculate the F0 in loudness, so it's the F0 in loudness preprocessor, so we have here the F0 latent representation and the loudness latent representation, and we have a processor group, so the processor group, when we go back we go down here, we see that this processor group is formed by a harmonic, a filtered noise, add and reverb. And we see here the harmonic, the filtered noise, the add and the reverb. Then we will have our synthesized audio. Then for every part we have some parameters. So we have the parameters for the processor add, it's just the name, add, we have 
parameters for the F0 loudness preprocessor. Then there are sometimes steps, parameters for the filtered noise, parameters for the harmonic, parameters for an oscillator bank, parameters for the reverb, for the recurrent neural networks fully connected decoder, parameters for the solo violin and parameters for the spectral loss as well as parameters for training like the batch size, the number of steps and here also parameters for the training such as the learning rate so all the parameters that we need are set here in this gene configuration file to investigate even further let's go to the github magenta slash ddsp and we go to TDSP training. So Magenta TDSP. We're here in the differentiable digital signal processing. Let's go to TDSP. And here we have some files, for example, processor losses, effects, spectral loss. Let's go here to training. And let's take a look at encoders. So there is a library of encoder objects. Just have in mind that this, for this specific example, and for this pre-trained model, there is no encoder. But I'll just list some available encoder. So there is a class C encoder. This is a base class to implement an encoder that creates a latent Z vector. We have MFCCs as latent variables distribute across time steps. We have ResNet sinusoidal encoder. So this encoder maps directly from audio to synthesizer parameters. We have sinusoidal to harmonic encoder that predicts harmonic controls from sinusoidal controls. We have one hot encoder that gets an embedding from um, the instrument one hot. We have aggregate features encoder that take mean of features embeddings in time. MFCC encoder that uses MFCC as latent variables. MFCC RNN encoder that uses MFCCs as latent variables compressed to single time step. MIDI encoder that encodes F0 and loudness to MIDI representation. Harmonic to MIDI encoder that encodes the harmonic synthesizer parameters to MIDI representation. Expression encoder that take uh, the get latent variable from MFCC's loudness and pitch. And those are the encoders. For the decoders, we can take a look here at the decoders. So oh, there's a library of decoder layers. Here we have the RNN FC decoder, and this is the one used decoder decoders RNN FC decoder. So it's used by this model we are talking. It's a recursive neural network and fully connected stacks for F0 and loudness. So there are some predefined parameters here. But we also have here other parameters for the RNN FC decoder. So uh, channels 512, have layers per stack, RNN channels, RNN type. And here are some defaults so we can also change using this configuration file. Then there will be some layers, input stacks, RNN in the output stack. Here is a method to compute the output. Run RNN over the latents. And here's some final processing and returns the out stack. The default type of the RNN is a GRU. So if you're not familiar with RNNs or recurrent neural networks, this is a class of artificial neural networks where connections between nodes from a direct graph along a temporal sequence. 
this allows to exhibit temporal dynamic behavior. They are derived from feed-forward neural networks and RNNs can use their internal state memory to process variable length sequences of inputs. So, here's just a general overview of uh, RNNs. And the type of RNN that we are using is the gated recurrent units, GRUs, and they are gating mechanism in recurrent neural networks. So, the GRUs is like a LS LSTM, long short term memory with a forget gate but has fewer parameters than lstm and that lacks an output gate the gru's performance on certain texts of polyphonic music model speech signal modeling nat nat natural language process was found to be similar of that of lstm so here you can take a look of um, gated recurrent units so to go deeper into rnns or gated recurrent unit, we will need a full series of the tutorials. That is not the purpose of this one, but this is here the decoder that they are using. That is here in this uh, gene file is the RNN FC decoder. We also will have here the harmonic. And the harmonic is part of the processor group. So we have synthesizers, harmonic. So we can go here to the DDSP, synths, so a library of synthesizer functions. And we have tensor to audio. We have the harmonic, so synthesize audio with a bank of harmonic sinusoidal oscillators and also here they will explain harmonic oscillator and additive synthesizer so also we have a series of um, parameters so as an argument it takes fixed length of audio of output audio there is a simple rate a scale function for amplitude and harmonic distribution inputs normalize below Nyquist so remove harmonics above the Nyquist frequency and normalize the remaining harmonic distribution to sum to one amp resample method mode with which to resample amplitude envelopes and here we have the filtered noise so the filtered noise is also part of our processor group we have here filtered noise we also have parameters for the filtered noise so the filtered noise synthesizes audio by filtering white noise and we have also the filtered noise subtractive synthesizer here and they explain that natural sounds contain both harmonic and stochastic components the harmonic plus noise model captures this by combining the output of an additive synthesizer with a stream of filtered noise. And this was shown by Sarah and Smith in the 90s and Beauchamp in 2007. So they are able to realize a differentiable filtered noise synthesizer by simply applying the LTV FIR filter from above to a stream of uniform noise. And here they explain the filter design and how they got this harmonic oscillator and the filtered noise and we also have here the losses so they're using this spectral loss so if we go here the DSP we will have losses we have a base class for all the losses and here we have the spectral loss, so it is the multi-scale spectrogram loss, which is also here part of our autoencoder architecture. And we have some parameters for the spectral loss. And they say here that this loss is the bread and butter of comparing two audio signals. It offers a range of options to compare spectrograms many of which are redundant but emphasize different aspects of the signal and by far 
the most common comparisons are magnitudes and log magnitudes. So here is uh, some words about the multiscale spectral loss. And they say that the primary object of the autoencoder is to minimize reconstruction loss. However, for audio waveforms, point-wise loss of the raw waveform is not ideal, as two perceptually identical audio samples may have distinct waveforms, and point-wise similar waveforms may sound very different. So instead, they are using a multiscale spectral loss similar to the multi-resolution spectral and amplitude distance in Wang et al. from 2019. So, all the parameters we need for the model are here at the operative config. There is still also the reverb, and the reverb will be part of the, the DSP effects. So, DSP effects. Then we have here reverb that implements a convolutional FIR reverb. It takes neural network outputs directly as the impulse response. So at this point we've already seen we have our target audio. We computed the loudness in F0 and we'll have this decoder. The output of the decoder goes to the harmonic audio and the filtered noise. Also the F0 goes to the harmonic audio, they are added, then it's adding some reverb, then we have this synthesized audio, and we are using a multiscale spectrogram loss. At this point here, we understood what the model is doing. We know the parameters of the model, there they are here on this gene. We know a bit more about this autoencoder architecture. Next, we can modify these conditions. So, for example, we can change thresholds for no detection. We can also shift the pitch to certain octaves or adjust the overall loudness. But this is a topic for the next tutorial.